Hello Internet, this is Whispering Whim, bringing you yet another grocery haul today. I don't have any housekeeping to talk about beforehand, so let's dive right in. First up, we have some kidney beans. I will be making minestrone soup tonight, so I have a lot of goodies that go into that. It's a very fun soup because you got zucchini in it and basil and two types of beans, noodles, uh, carrots, celery, tomato. There's just, there's so much. Um, but it's a very, very tasty soup, right? Uh, and we have the other bean, which is a white bean. And I have not one, but two. Yes, two cans of the white beans because later on in the month I will be making my infamous white bean chili. That seems to be a, a pretty much a monthly meal for us at this point. Um, it's good to have a lot of quick meals. For me, um, my guy has many social obligations and I actually encourage it. I don't want him to be home all the time. <laughs> um, I, I like my quiet time. Um, so he has some things, but when he gets these obligations, sometimes it's like, oh, I need to eat dinner by 530. And, you know, no one's thinking about making dinner at four. Not usually. I don't. Um, so having things that can be made really quickly <laughs> uh, helps in that. Uh, anyways, we have some diced tomatoes. Those will go in the minestrone soup as well. And as if I'm not going to have enough soup this month, I also have yet another one of these roasted pepper and tomato soups. So this is sort of like a cream of tomato soup. It's a similar like thickness and everything. Uh, but that little bit of red pepper kind of does add just, just a notch of flavor, I think. So I like that a lot. I just have to remember to uh, measure correctly. A serving size is one cup, and there's four servings in here. But one cup is not quite enough for me. So I usually do one and one third, and that's fine if I remember to do one and one third. For some reason, I keep messing it up, and I do like one and a half or one and a quarter. I don't know what the psychology there is, but um, yeah, it's, it's been a, a minor issue. <laughs> Nothing major, of course. All right, next up we have some juice folds. These are those um, Gusher-like uh, fruit snacks that are not name brand Gusher. I got a slightly different flavor today. This is the mixed fruit flavor. I have discovered that my uh, Winco, the closest one to me, which is still kind of far away, I hate that it's that far away. Um, actually has three different varieties for the juicefuls. We've tried the tropical one. We're going to try the mixed fruit. And then I think next time we'll just go ahead and try the berry. See if they're actually any different or if it's just an illusion. <laughs> All right. Next up, we have some of those pretzel pieces. I buy these pretty regularly. I think you guys know the deal. I love them and they're like a forbidden food because with the braces they're very hard to chew <laughs> but my guy definitely loves them and I get them for him not for me so it's okay <laughs> uh, here we have some good old potatoes I'll be doing meatloaf later on in the month and I thought some roasted potatoes would go well with that and I'm also going to be making some pot pie this month. So one of those potatoes is reserved for the pot pie, too. And then this is something new. Uh, coconut caramel fudge. So this is a Winco brand, so a store brand cookie. Um, but the flavor notes there are the same as a Girl Scout cookie. Um, what are they? In, in part of the country, they're called Samoas, uh, I think. 
Not this part. This part of the country, I think, usually calls it caramel delight. Um, but yeah, there's a cookie like this, and it has a regional name. Uh, and it has always been my favorite Girl Scout cookie. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll try to get, like, a box of it when it becomes Girl Scout time, but... Oh my goodness. Uh, for I know I have some uh, European viewers, and maybe even elsewhere... Um, but for those who don't live in the States, the Girl Scouts, you know, it's a, a very large organization, teaches girls, you know, crafting and camping skills and all that. Um, and it also teaches them to sell cookies. And they're decent cookies, but they sell these cookies right now, I think, at like $9 for a box that would, you know, be about equivalent to this $2 package. <laughs> And it's very aggressive and cutthroat. It's obnoxious because <laughs> every troop has these goals to meet and the girls get individual prizes for meeting their part of the goal. Um, so what ends up happening during Girl Scout season is every storefront, everyone has little cute children <laughs> in front of it being like, please buy our cookies. Um, and if I was a millionaire, sure, you know, they're not terrible cookies, but you don't get a lot of cookie <laughs> out of what you're paying for. Um, it's just, I don't know. My sister was in the Girl Scouts for a long time. I did it very briefly. Um, so I feel bad because I know the pressure those kids are under, but I typically go to the grocery store almost once a week. Like, I do my major shopping trip, and then I've always forgotten something, and then I have my intermediate trip, and then I forget something off of that. I, I go grocery shopping often, so I run into these kids often, and I just, it breaks my heart that I can't buy from all of those little kids. I'm sure that's going to come up soon. It's not actually Girl Scout season yet. <laughs> Um, but anyways, moving on. Let's move on. This is a bag o mangoes. Uh, my guy has declared that his favorite fruit. Um, and if they were easier to cut, I would probably buy them all the time for him. But they are not easy to cut. And um, going to a store that might pre-cut them for me, super expensive. We actually have one really close to me. I love their produce section. They have the best produce. All the stuff you can't find in like regular grocery stores. They have like monk fruit and star fruit and um, gosh, I can't even think lychee sometimes. They have some really good fruit selections and vegetables too. Uh, but they are expensive. <laughs> and if I go in for a little bit of fruit, you know what happens? I end up having... Um, uh, a, a, a like hundred dollar bill for like five items and then oh no this is a freezer bag that has been out of the freezer for far far too long I forgot about it um, but there are some stuffed hash browns I've tried many of the breakfast selections that you guys gave me uh, but mostly I've just reverted to eating those once in a while and then having vegetables for breakfast <laughs> Uh, we have, speaking of, some vegetables that are, yikes, mostly thawed out. That's bad. Uh, and some freezer bread, which probably will survive being thawed out pretty well. The other two items I'm not so sure about. Uh, these have been, oh goodness, at room temperature for at least two hours now. That's bad. Oh, uh, goodness. Anyways, I'm going to stick these in the freezer and I will... I will hope that they are fine. <laughs> okay, and our next bag, sitting on top of another bag here. We have some more dry goods. I thought everything that was on the counter was dry goods. Hence the, the problem with the freezer bag. I do have a bag in the cooler, full of cooler stuff. Um, I think what threw me off is that I usually don't share, show you guys the freezer stuff anymore uh, for simplicity's sake. But this was a slightly smaller trip, so I was going to show you, and then I forgot that I had it out. Anyways, long story. 
not so long story just boring <laughs> we have some muffins this is for my guy to have as part of his breakfast on the weekends he always gets a little fun breakfast item we have some seaweed snacks those are for me and then we have let's see here oh yes some circus animal cookies um you know they now have a mythical creatures complement to these instead of pink and white it's purple and white um, and instead of the little non perielles they have um, crystal sugar on them and I've tried both kinds and while I like the concept of mythical creatures more I think really having this original um, mix is better I like the non perielles a little bit better have you ever gotten to the point in life where you know the name of different kinds of sprinkles? Because I'm at that point in my life. <laughs> now, granted, I was a baker for, you know, 10 years or something like that, so I had to know. But it's kind of funny sometimes when you realize you know something really specific like that. So, like, these are little, like, circle-shaped sprinkles. If they were those, like, longer sort of cornstarch sprinkles, those are called jimmies. Or at least colloquially, they're called jimmies. They might be called something different uh, around the world, I'm sure. Uh, another fun fact, if I have any Australian viewers, um, I have yet to try fairy bread. And for everybody else who has not heard of fairy bread, basically they butter toast and put sprinkles on it. And that's like a major thing, as far as I understand. And I would like to try it. The only problem I see is that... American bread is typically a lot sweeter than it is like anywhere else. Um, I've, I've read many, many people commenting on uh, how sweet our bread is. They think it's like a dessert bread. So I'm wondering if sprinkles is over the top to us because our bread is already <laughs> over the top. But one of these days, I'm going to give it a go. Uh, in the meantime, though... We have some uh, black garlic parmesan flavoring. Um, I'm going to do Brussels sprouts and chicken later on in the month. And this will uh, do well by those Brussels sprouts. It's a really good mix for them. Uh, and then we have some garlic urban wine. This is for a separate chicken and vegetable dish. It's just a really good marinade. Um, I like how versatile those things are. And, you know, I buy lots of fancy spices, but sometimes just getting the premix is just, it's better. <laughs> occasionally, not every time, but occasionally. All right. And then last for that bag is some aluminum foil. I actually have some, I think it's hiding behind the cutting boards back there. Uh, but it's the really thick good kind and I kept using it for situations that a thinner foil would work so I'm finally being practical about this and I got some thin foil or to multi-purpose is what they call the thin one <laughs> and then when it's a thick one they just tell you that it's thick so that's always fun all right now we just have one more uh, dry bag it looks like this trip was definitely a little on the smaller side um, I'm really trying to crack down on our budget and everything so instead of when I normally shop I actually just go and I pick things up <laughs> uh, this time I actually wrote out everything I wanted to cook for the next two weeks um, and then which store I was gonna buy which ingredient at and like did a whole bunch of legwork. Um, and I haven't done the Sam's Club. That's the big bulk warehouse style store. I haven't done that part of the shopping yet. It won't be in this video, sorry. <laughs> um, but I think this is going to be much more effective way <laughs> of buying things because I definitely spent less than I typically do. But maybe I didn't buy enough. I don't know. We'll find out. Okay, anyways, so 
some good old facial tissues. Uh, the name brand being Kleenex. Um, brand nomers is a fun thing. You know, when you think of a tissue, and instead of saying tissue, you think Kleenex, or instead of a Q-tip, you think, or instead of a cotton swab, you think Q-tip. There's a whole like thing about that where people, companies rather, try to differentiate that their product is not what the product should be called, like their name brand, because they want to stand out. Um, there's a lot of examples of that. We used to play a game uh, when I was a lifeguard long, long time ago, where we would try to think about as many brand nomers as we could in a row. Um, and there's, there's a lot of them. Uh, let's see here. What else comes off the top of my head? A band-aid, uh, which would be a um, bandage or a plaster, um, depending on where you live. There's a few more, but I will move on from that. Because in my hand is a very crinkly, crunchy bag of potato chips. That's for my guys' lunches right there. And then we have some tortillas. We'll be making tacos again. That's a pretty regular thing. We have some zesty dill, 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 dill spears. There we go. Didn't know that would be a tongue twister. Um, I always get torn on whether to buy pickles at the regular grocery store or at the bulk grocery store. I got it at the regular grocery store this time around um, because they have this zesty flavor. It's like got a bit of kick to it. It's not like hot, hot, but um, definitely a little spicy. And I think my guy prefers them because he always prefers more spice. Um, that's no surprise. Uh, so I think he prefers them bought for the same price. I could go over to Sam's Club, which is the bulk store, and get a, you know, decent but generic tasting pickle. It's like twice as much volume. Uh, petite pickles. And yeah, so I get a lot more pickles for the price. So it's always a toss up. And what I just do is I, you know, alternate. So sometimes he gets the tasty pickles and sometimes he gets the um, sufficient, sufficiently good pickles. <laughs> Next up, we have some sourdough bread, but this is the cracked wheat version, so it has just a tiny bit more fiber and, and stuff in it than a typical sourdough bread does. Uh, and I will be using that for, for many things, but mostly for steak sandwiches, because that's always good. And then we have, let me stay up there. We have some jalapenos. They are not as super ginormous as last month's jalapenos, so I won't be making any poppers this time around. We have some curry mix thing, bouillon cube. I don't know exactly how you would define that. Um, they're like little tablets. They're pressed spice with like a little bit of fat and uh, they are very very uh, good for making curry but I feel like I'm not missing out on any curry goodness versus like you know I've, I've had curry powders and mixes and you know made my own adventure kind of a thing and you know just getting that stuff works very well okay next up some Fig Newtons. These are the, not Fig Newtons, pardon me. These are just the Newtons <laughs> that are strawberry flavored. Uh, it still cracks me up that my guy can't stand Fig Newtons, which is the original stuffed cookie type thing that that brand is known for. Um, and that they, it also cracks me up that they, instead of saying strawberry Newtons, they just call them Newtons but the fig newtons are still called fig newtons i don't know 
I don't know why that stands out to me, but it does. And I can't get over it. <laughs> uh, and finishing out our dry goods bag, which probably this should have been in the cooler bag, but I bet they'll be fine, uh, is some zucchini. So I did not have very good um, resource allocation this time around. And I'm also seeing I missed one thing in this bag. So let's go ahead and grab that guy out. And that is a head of garlic. All right. <laughs> Moving along, we're at our final bag already. It was, again, a bit of a smaller trip, partly because of the planning and partly because I did not hit both stores in one day. Um, but we still have a few things to go over, and one of which is some ready-to-use pie crust. I am a big fat cheater. Pie crust is actually not that hard to make, but I don't have a lot of counter space. And that's the part that throws me off. If I had a bigger kitchen, I probably would make pie crust from scratch. Um, but yeah, this is just, I'm gonna go on easy mode when I make my pot pies uh, and use pie crust. Now as a random little aside, one of the reasons why I wanted to make sure I had the uh, thinner foil is that something that I need the thicker foil for is making the pot pie rounds. I don't have any ramekins or appropriate vessels for individual pot pies, so I make my own <laughs> out of foil. And I almost cheated. Like, Winco didn't have anything that was, like, pie-shaped that small. But they had, like, little tiny bread loaf molds, you know? the aluminum with the plastic topper. And I almost got those to put the pot pie in, but they had a plastic lid included, which is normally a selling feature, right? But I have no use for that lid, being that I'm going to make pot pies and serve them. <sighs> so, uh, long story short, I wanted the convenience of having a preformed shell and just did not go that way to save the plastic. <laughs> I'm still a good girl sometimes. Sometimes. Okay. Next up, we have some mozzarella cheese. Some clover and alfalfa sprouts. Some kielbasa. I love, I love having kielbasa on hand because it's good for like so long. <laughs> uh, we have some regular old butter. Here's some pre-chopped basil. Um, last time I bought this was the first time I had bought this brand. I wasn't sure about it, uh, but it ended up being pretty good and it lasts about about a month and a half in the fridge, so I get to use it for a couple of different things. And then we have half and half. That's for my guy's coffee. I am a reformed coffee drinker. I don't do it that much anymore. And in fact, the past couple of times where it sounded good, I'll, I've poured myself a small cup of coffee and have not been able to finish it, which is weird. <laughs> I used to drink like, let's say, uh, maybe 16 ounces worth of coffee every morning. Uh, it's weird when things like that change. Anyways, moving on, we have a uh, little petite sirloin. This is what I'll make our steak sandwiches out of. Um, and I was surprised to find a package that was only $3.87. Um, it's 0 .7, 0 0.67 pounds, so it's not a full pound of um, steak, but it is a sufficient volume for steak sandwiches. So, I don't know. 
It feels like a deal. I wonder if, like, the guy had his thumb on the scale or something, because... Actually, what should... Where is it? Let's, let's take a look a little bit, because I feel like those steaks have to weigh more than the, um... Package is saying it just the price was too too good. Let's see here, and of course I won't know exactly how much this styrofoam weighs, but it can't weigh that much. Okay, so with styrofoam and plastic, my personal scale is saying that this is eleven point five ounces versus their six point seven. Yeah, someone had a thumb on the scale or. Um, something. There's no way this styrofoam weighs what? That would have to be a difference of 11.5 minus 6.7. That's almost like half the weight, guys. <laughs> I got a deal on this. I don't know how or why, but I got a deal on that. Okay. Moving right along. Uh, we have some provolone cheese. That is the cheese of choice for both steak sandwiches and stuffed bell peppers. I'll be doing some stuffed bell peppers later on in the month. Um, I already bought the bell peppers uh, on one of my in-between trips, so they're they're still waiting. They're waiting. And then I have one little itty bitty package of chicken. I plan on purchasing most of my chicken when I go to the bulk store, but I did not want to go to the bulk store this week. Um, especially, you know, cause like I buy a lot of my vegetables there too. It's good to stagger the two trips. As much as I enjoy having many things to show off, I think I'm gonna continue to keep them separate when appropriate. But anyways. This is our final item. Oh my goodness, this video went so quick. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's good for me, but uh, I always like to make sure you guys have enough time to, like, you know, relax and stuff. Uh, anyways, we have for our final item some good old string cheese. This is for my guy's lunches. And I'm pretty sure he could eat string cheese forever, every day of his life, and be just fine with that. <laughs> it's quite funny. Although he does like it when I buy him some random other cheeses, but uh, he really does love his, his string cheese. And with that, we're already at the end of my grocery haul. Um, when the, the checkout lady told me that my total for today was only $125, I kind of knew it was going to be a smaller um, trip, so to speak. But I felt like I got everything that I needed to get from that particular store. So it's kind of surprising to me how efficiently the list system worked. <laughs> I wonder if I'm going to find out that I'm missing a lot of things later on. Because <laughs> that would be my luck. And I do still have to go to Sam's Club. Um, from them, I'm going to get some Brussels sprouts, tomatoes. Um, let's see, where is that little list? I'm also going to get oh, toilet paper in bulk, of course. Uh, chicken, ground beef, and I think... I think that's it. I'm trying to read from afar. Um, but anyways, uh, thank you guys so much for listening. And thank you to my commenters. We had some people commenting last month um, about the cooking. And they were all, you know, very enthusiastic for me adding a little bit of cooking to the end. So if a video is going to be super duper short, like today's bit borderline if I'm being honest. Uh, but if it if I think it would end before like, let's say 20 minutes, because it's a small trip, I will add in a cooking thing and, and fluff out the time for you guys. Because <laughs> um, I like making you happy. So um, speaking of people commenting and being happy, I of course got to do some shout outs. Uh, shout out to Hot Sauce 188, The 
ASMR Samurai, Lacey, Dulce Crystal, and Snuffle Pig. <laughs> Thank you guys for commenting and helping me, you know, know what's good and, and, and which direction you guys want me to go in. Um, so until next month, I hope you have a wonderful night. Bye-bye.